let us prepare our hearts and our minds for the word of God this morning. I want to share a thought with you that I trust will be a blessing. We're taking our assignment from the book of Philippians, the third chapter, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, beginning at verse 7. I once thought these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake, I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage, so that I could gain Christ and become one with him. I no longer count my own righteousness through obeying the law. Rather, I become righteous through faith in Christ. For God's way of making us right with himself depends on faith. I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him sharing in his death so that one way or another I will experience the resurrection from the dead. I don't mean to say that I have already achieved these things or that I have already reached perfection, but I press on to possess that perfection for which Christ Jesus first possessed me. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I press on to reach the end of the race and achieve the heavenly prize for which God, through Christ Jesus, is calling us. From verse 13. No, dear brothers and sisters, I have not achieved it, but I focus on this one thing, forgetting the past and looking forward to what lies ahead. I want to speak this morning on the subject of redeeming your past redeeming your past. Redemption means to buy back something that was lost. In the book of Philippians, it's a favorite book for many. It is, without a doubt, one of the most encouraging books of the New Testament. While the Philippian church did have some issues that needed to be addressed. It was not a letter of harsh rebuke. It was not a whole lot of doctrinal errors that needed to be addressed. The Philippian church had a very good relationship with the Apostle Paul. He founded the church and they liked him a lot, which for Paul was somewhat special because not everybody liked the Apostle Paul. Leaders and churches often gave him hard times and resisted his leadership. But the Philippian church was very happy and delighted with their founder, the man of God that the Lord has sent into their lives. When we think about the Apostle Paul, we think of the man who gave us almost half of our New Testament. He is one of the most familiar of the 12 apostles. We know more about the Apostle Paul 
perhaps more than any other of the apostles or leaders of the early church, the first church for that matter. We know Paul as someone that preached to the masses, preached to crowds, Jews and Gentiles. Gentiles at a time when many believed that God had no dealings with pagans and non-Jews. But it was the Apostle Paul that broke through that barrier and preached that salvation was God's gift to everyone. He preached to large crowds. He preached to small homes, individuals. It was the Apostle Paul that we know that brought the gospel before kings. And eventually would go on to Rome. The Apostle Paul was also noted for a tremendous amount of suffering for the name of Christ where many stories of him being beaten and imprisoned, tortured, going without, finding enemies in the church and out of the church. And history tells us that he eventually was martyred for his belief in Jesus Christ. But the Apostle Paul was a man of great achievement. The Apostle Paul had a past. He was a very educated man, unlike many of the other apostles that without a doubt were illiterate, they were fishermen, they were what would be called peasants. The Apostle Paul was from the upper class. He was not a poor peasant. He was a well-learned man. And he had many achievements. But he shares with this church of his, this fond church of his, and reveals some personal insights about himself. And to that we find in this chapter, though I also might have confidence in the flesh, if anyone else thinks he may have confidence in the flesh, I more so. And he starts to list a few of his achievements and accomplishments. Circumcised the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, which was noted because at a time when there were no 12 tribes any longer at the time of Jesus, Paul was well aware of his heritage. He could trace it back to the tribe that he was from. A Hebrew of the Hebrews, Concerning the law of Pharisee, unlike the other apostles, Paul was in fact a Pharisee, a very religious man. Concerning zeal, enthusiasm, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness which is in the law, blameless. Paul says, I wasn't a hypocrite. I wasn't playing church. I was trying to do it right. But what things were gained to me, these I have counted loss for Christ. Yet indeed, I also count all things loss for the excellence of the knowledge of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and count them as rubbish that I may gain Christ. Paul says, with all that I have, all of my learning, all of my accomplishments, everything that I thought I knew about God, I count them as nothing when compared to a relationship with Jesus. Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus. I was brought up and educated here in Jerusalem under Gamaliel. Now, Go to a map. Paul's birthplace was Asia Minor, which is modern day Turkey. And this is where he was born. And it tells us that he was raised and lived in Jerusalem. And it says that he 
was under a teacher by the name of Gamiel. Now, Gamiel is actually referred to earlier in the book of Acts. He was a most respected rabbi. He actually came into confrontation with the apostles when they brought Peter and John and imprisoned them and beaten them. It was this man that actually had something to say about what the Jews were doing to this new group that would be known as Christians. But one member, a Pharisee named Gamiel, who was an expert in religious law and respected by all the people, stood up and ordered that the men be sent outside of the council chamber for a while. Then he said to his colleagues, men of Israel, take care what you are planning to do with these men, referring to the apostles Peter and John. So my advice is leave these men alone. Let them go. If they are planning and doing things merely on their own, it will soon be overthrown. But if it is from God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You may even find yourselves fighting against God. Well, Paul didn't take that advice. He resisted that. As a student, I was carefully trained in our Jewish laws and customs. I became very zealous to honor God in everything I did, just like all of you today. Another fact about Paul we learned, the commander came and said to him, tell me, are you a Roman? He said, yes. So Paul, we find, was a Roman citizen. Now, we're not certainly how he got his citizenship. Tradition says it had to do with where he was born, in Tarsus, where about 50 years before Christ, Julius Caesar gave this entire city citizenship and made those men and women of that town, that city, free citizens. There are several ways that you could become a Roman citizen other than being Roman. You could buy, purchase your citizenship. You could gain it by fighting in the Roman army. The commander here makes it known on how he got his. The commander answered, with the large sum I obtained this citizenship. And Paul said, I was born a citizen. So Paul was born a citizen, and that was a big deal. To be a Roman citizen meant a lot. It meant you had certain privileges and statuses that ordinary people didn't have. And so we see yet another accomplishment, a quality to this man, the Apostle Paul. For a Jewish man to have Roman citizenship was a big deal. So Paul was an accomplished man, and that was his past. I once thought all these things were valuable, but now I consider them worthless because of what Christ has done. Yes, everything else is worthless when compared to the infinite value of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord. For his sake I have discarded everything else, counting it all as garbage so that I could gain Christ. But he had another past. He also had a different past, a darker past. Paul's dark past was in stark contrast to this. Paul, who in his earlier years went by the Hebrew name Saul, was a persecutor of Christians. He, as a Jewish man, saw this new Christianity as cultic and heresy. We are introduced to him in the New Testament as someone that participated in the slaying of one of 
the early leaders of the church. Stephen, he had him stoned. And it's interesting that he didn't do it himself, but he was okay with it being done. Many people feel that if they're not directly involved in abuse, that it doesn't count. But are you okay with people being abused? Does that sit well with you? And Paul was okay with this. And if that wasn't bad enough, he didn't stop there. He decided to make this his personal campaign. And he went out after all Christians. He didn't stop at Stephen. He traveled to find people who believed in Jesus, to turn them in, bring them into bondage, and causing many of them their death. So Paul had a past, and it was a dark past. We can only imagine how that must have haunted him from time to time to not only be responsible for the deaths of people, but to come to know that you were directly responsible for killing many of the people that you've now come to love and to serve. People that your Lord and Savior loved and died for, you sent them to their graves. Paul would reference this from time to time you know what I was like when I followed the Jewish religion, how I violently persecuted God's church. I did my best to destroy it. I was far ahead of my fellow Jews in my zeal for the tradition of my ancestors. I used to believe that I ought to do everything I could to oppose the very name of Jesus the Nazarene. Indeed, I did just that in Jerusalem. Authorized by the leading priests, I caused many believers there to be sent to prison. I cast my vote against them when they were condemned to death. Well, we know that things changed in the life of the Apostle Paul when he came to meet the Lord Jesus Christ. And it had a profound effect on his life. And it is to no wonder why he would come to make and learn this statement, that it is a trustworthy saying, and everyone should accept it. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the worst of them all. Paul had a dark past. When Paul got saved, not everyone was digging on it. When Saul arrived in Jerusalem, he tried to meet with the believers, but they were all afraid of him. They did not believe he had truly become a believer. You can have such a reputation where nobody really trusts you. And it's hard to attach yourself. It's hard to be seen as someone who has changed. There are many of us who are labeled for what we have done in the past. And there are many in our lives who will never let it go. We will always be that person that did this, that person that caused that. And if we are not careful, we will allow our past to shape and determine who we are now. There is a classic story, The Christmas Carol, there were many versions of it. And 
You all know the story. He was visited by three different ghosts. And the first ghost was the ghost of Christmas past. And as the story goes, the spirit showed him many things that he did in his past life. Many of the hurts and pains that he experienced. And one of them was he had a love for a woman, a young girl, and he lost the love of his life because he chose rather to pursue money. And it was something that he grew to regret. And because of that and other negative experiences, it turned him into a bitter old man. When we think about years ago, for some of us, we can think back 25, 30, 40 years. And if you think back, for those old enough to say 40 years ago, one of these days, I want to do this. One of these days, I hope to accomplish that. Today is that time that you used to think about. This present time, you used to ponder when you were younger. Where is it? Has it turned out the way you had hoped? The way you have planned? Or are you living with regrets? Choices that you've made that have brought you to where you are now. Were we experiencing pains and abuses that we never got over that bring us to where we are now? When we look at the life of Joseph, he was one that had such turmoil in his life. As a young boy, he was rejected and abused by his own family. The brothers that were supposed to protect him and guide him and take care of him allowed jealousy and envy to go against him, hating him for his favor, hating him for his gift. You know the story, this hatred came to a boil where they attempted to kill him and later sold him into slavery. Through the providence, he finds himself in Egypt and things got no better. He was falsely accused and spent many years in prison and forgotten. How he must have thought as the years progressed how he came to this place. What others have done to him that brought him to where he was. As the story goes, God opened doors and raised him up, and he ended up becoming second in command in the land of Egypt, the power of the world. He brings his brothers in, reveals himself, and shows favor to them. But in the course of time, their father died, and his brothers thought it's payback now. He thought the gig was up, and Joseph was going to think back on what we did to him, and he's going to pay us back. Joseph reveals himself, and he makes this proclamation. You find it in Genesis 50. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves, they said. But Joseph replied, don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so that I could save the lives of many people. Joseph took his experience, his trials, 
all of his pain and he was able to see that God worked it out for the good. That God took all of the things that were abusive and painful to me and turned them for his glory. David would say, before I was afflicted, I went astray, but now I keep your word. Can we look back on the things that went wrong in our lives and come to a place where it said, you know, if it didn't happen like that, I wouldn't be where I am today. Can we come to a place where we realize God can take the pains of your past and turn them into the power of your present? God can take every hurt and abuse that you've experienced and turn it into his glory. But you know, it's a trick of the devil that he will cause you to think back on some of the things you've done, some of the things that you were a part of, and bring you down with guilt and shame. Like the Apostle Paul, it will cause you to think back Maybe you came from an abusive environment. Maybe your life was one of lust and addictions, full of sins, hurtful environments, and that clouds your memories. Maybe you were one of those who abused others and caused others to be hurt, caused others pain and suffering and if you let that you could find yourself like the apostle Paul if you allow that to bring you down and cause you to have guilt and shame and regret if you will it's easy to just focus on that and say that's who I was that's what happened to me but Paul shared a secret with this church. He says, there's one thing that I've learned to do. I got to forget about my past. I have to forget about the things that are behind. Because if I look back long enough, it will stop me from growing. It will stop me from moving forward. Paul came to a place that no matter all the things that I've done, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me was not in vain. It didn't go to waste. It had an effect. When you think back and say, well, I was a rotten person, we are told that though your sins be as scarlet, the power of God can make them white as snow. I don't care where you come from. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and carry heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. I've come from a dark past, and I've done all kinds of things that I've learned to regret. I don't have time to sit back with regrets on anything that I've done in the past. But I learned that it was through the power of God that he has broken the chains and brought me to where I am. I don't have time to look back and think about what I did because I'm leaning and pressing on a higher ground in Jesus Christ. I may have had a life of lust, but he taught me how to love my neighbors. Hallelujah. I may have been found with addictions, but I have found the peace of God and the power of God that has set me free. Hallelujah. If you look back, long enough it will bear you down and weigh you down but when you cast it all on Jesus and know that things may have gone wrong I might have been abused I might have hurt other people but when I came to Jesus Christ I became a new creature all things have passed away and all things have become new I don't have time to regret because I'm busy praising God I don't have time to feel bad 
that because I'm busy saying thank you Jesus he has redeemed my past he has taken me higher he has washed me clean and I say thank you Jesus for where I am you brought me out you picked me up you turned me around you redeemed my past 